known for being an early star of Discovery Channel's and once TLC's ultra well-known automotive reality television series entitled American Chopper, Vincent Vinny DiMartino is rated one of the world's most highly respected motorcycle builders. He was part of the unforgettable cast in 2003, 2006, and 2007 on Discovery Channel. Under the production team of Pilgrim Films and Television, while he appeared in the show in only three particular years, he worked for the company that produces the motorcycles, Orange County Choppers, OCC, from 2002 to 2007. The show ran until 2012 but restarted briefly six years later, eventually stretching across 12 seasons and 238 episodes by mid-2019. It took home four awards and was nominated for two others. In 2005, BMI Film and TV Awards credited the series with the BMI Cable Award and once again in 2006. It won two Astro Awards in 2007 in the Favorite International Personality or Actor and Favorite International Program categories. Lastly, in 2008, it was nominated for the Astro Award in two categories but didn't win. While the concept of American Chopper was fairly simple, focusing on the production of custom-made chopper-style motorcycles, the day-to-day -day work of the crew was anything but. Most of the drama that occurs in basically every single episode was caused by the inherent disagreements between Paul Tootle Sr. and his son Paul Tootle Jr., referred to as Sr. and Jr. respectively. The negative energy resulting from these verbal squabbles would frequently spread across the whole cast and crew, impacting team cohesion and product quality. These altercations culminated in late 2008 when Junior was late one too many times. Senior was furious, even before his son came in for work, stating, Paul is late again this morning. Pretty much I've had enough. You know, it's been one thing after another with him, and I'm just not gonna let him get away with it anymore. He called Junior on the phone and said, Come in now, alright? Come into my office. Senior then made a point out of the fact that every employee needs to be on the premises at 7 o'clock in the morning sharp. But Junior was customarily 45 minutes late. Senior further said that his son then leaves the building multiple times taking breaks that are much longer than allowed for in the contract and repeats this behavior every week. After explaining the time, Senior said, That's in the contract that you need to abide by. What the fu- Junior simply replied with, I don't know what you want from me. They both escalated the shouting match, which ended in Junior throwing a chair into the corner of the office and storming out. Senior shouted, you're terminated, to which Junior replied, it's about time. Junior was then fired from the company, but TLC sent him a notice of default, causing Junior to return to the company so as to not lose the contract for the show. He worked for OCC as a contractor until April ultimately leaving to focus on his personal design company, Paul Jr. Designs. It was fights like these that caused Vinny to part ways with the company as well, stating in 2007, I had gone as far as I could there. I really didn't have any chance for advancement, and I had always wanted to have my own shop anyways, so the natural progression was to leave and start my own place. Vinny was brought into this world by Margaret DiMartino on 9th of October 1972 in Hudson Valley, New York State, USA. The second of four children of her and John DiMartino, who was a car mechanic, thanks to John owning a full vehicle repair shop, Vincent had a place to grow a very early passion that would later propel him into stardom. As the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, Vinny began picking up on all things mechanical becoming a fully-fledged gearhead before he was even 10 years old. At the age of 14, DiMartino was already earning an income with his expertise, finding employment in a nearby up-and-coming engine repair shop. When he was around 17, Vinny was already fully dismantling and rebuilding motorcycles and cars, and so familiarizing himself with one of the more sophisticated aspects of vehicular performance. He chased higher and higher pay over the course of the 1990s, learning his craft from increasingly more experienced mechanics. Finally, with over two decades of experience, Vinny contacted his high school friend Paul Tootle Jr., whose father owned and operated the soon-to-be-famous Orange County Choppers Automotive Shop. His timing was rather fortunate as well, since the Discovery Channel was shooting the pilot episode of the show 
at the time of his hiring. Vincent arrived at the shop only a few days after the pilot had been completed, but didn't realize until a month later that an entire TV series was about to enter production in his workplace. He left this position in August 2007, subsequently founding V-Force Customs, his own motorcycle building shop, situated in Rock Tavern, New York State. The company later boasted their first design achievement in Daytona Beach, Florida, the V-Force One. Following the resounding triumph of their motorcycle over the competition, the then-existing Arena League football team named Tampa Bay Storm took a great interest in the product. Ordering a custom-built V-Force chopper, the successful creation of this motorcycle was announced by Vinny himself. From the midfield at a football game played by the Tampa Bay Storm in Amelie Arena, then still St. Pete Times Forum. The custom chopper was finally revealed to the public at the final game of the patron team on the 21st of June 2008. It was sent on a tour across the southeast of North America with all of its earnings diverted towards the Shriners Hospital for Children as well as the Pinellas County Humane Society in Tampa. In the same month, the shop was officially opened with the cutting of a ribbon. Two years later, Vinny returned to the big screen again as an American Chopper cast member, albeit under drastically different circumstances. After Senior and Junior each went their own way, Discovery Channel offered them a deal to showcase both of the companies in a competitive environment, this time called American Chopper Senior vs. Junior. As one might imagine, the famous father and son began competing to outdo one another in custom chopper production. Vinny joined Junior's crew and remained in the show for 55 of its 65 episodes over the entire duration of its four seasons from 2010 to 2012. The show was officially cancelled by the Discovery Channel on the 16th of November 2012. As the biggest and most important TV show about choppers came to a close, the public's desire to own one also began to drop off. The reduction in interest was so severe that by the second half of 2013, it was no longer profitable for Vinny to maintain a custom chopper building business, forcing him to shut down V-Force Customs. That wasn't the end, however, because only a year later, he turned the remaining assets into DiMartino Motorsports Automotive and Truck Repair. As the name suggests, this company deals in the servicing and repairing of all cars, all light-duty trucks, and most medium-duty ones. As stated on its website, the business is still alive and well in late 2022. So, what's the legacy of Orange County Choppers? While Senior's business lost its screen presence almost definitively in 2012, the masterpieces of modern machinery that it had created remain in the minds of fans worldwide. Vinny himself played an important part in bringing such motorcycles into existence. DiMartino started his string of contributions by working on the Comanche bike, a motorcycle modeled after the US Army attack helicopter Boeing Sicker Sky Ra 66 Comanche. Due to its unique design, however, it turned out to have a faulty engine while being exhibited in South Carolina requiring multiple rounds of repair before it could be ready to perform. Along with Paul Sr. and Paul Jr., Vincent was flown in for the event along with the chopper from New York, aboard the Bell 206 helicopter. The Mickey Vinny bike is perhaps DiMartino's most notable work in OCC. It was created in 2004 through his collaboration from Michael Mickey Tootle, featuring a V-Series engine that necessitated a considerable amount of extra work, mostly in the form of adjustments. Once it was finished, the illustrations of both Michael and Vincent were printed onto the rear of the motorcycle. Aside from these, OCC has also built a number of one-of-a-kind choppers, most famously the PureFit bike, which was designed for PureFit nutrition bars. Although a near-impossible build, its completion became the founding pillar of solidarity and dedication in OCC. In 2004, they constructed the football bike, at the request of the New York Jets, but the subsequent unveiling of which received an underwhelming reaction from the public. There was no particular complexity in the design, no detailed fabrication and paintwork, and it wasn't produced in a time crunch, so there was no real excuse for delivering an almost mundane looking chopper. After its PR failure at the Giants Stadium in New Jersey, the bike was stowed away and subsequently damaged. Years later, Junior bought it for himself and restored it in his own shop. 
The Tonight Show host, Jay Leno, was a personal favorite of the Toodle family, and they took up his request to create the modern version of George Bro's 1930 Bro Superior SS100, though with the caveat that it shouldn't really look like a chopper. The resulting motorcycle had a heavily modified luggage rack and fuel tank, sporting the license plate that spelled OC3377, of which the OC represents Orange County Chopper, while the digits refer to Jay Leno's arrival to television on the 3rd of March, 1977. The host was officially presented with his order during one of the episodes of the show. One of the most fascinating bikes built by OCC in 2004 was the Liberty Bike, requested by the CEO of Solea Company, Richard W. Stocks. His business aimed to explore, maintain, and restore the Statue of Liberty. The client really untied their hands this time, and so they were allowed to use all sorts of materials that would be otherwise completely inaccessible. Hence, the cable that lit the torch of the Statue of Liberty for the first time in its history was made into the bike shifter, while all of the ubiquitous bronze on the model came from the metal that was used to maintain the Statue of Liberty itself. Aside from taking good care of his business and servicing all kinds of vehicles at DiMartino Industries in Walden, New York, Vinny is also dedicated to expanding his brand, but also spends time with his family. He married Melissa in 2001, with whom he has four children. Daughters Isabella, Vanessa, and Ava are all older than their son, Vincent. In 2022, the old motorcycle creator is still as excited as on day one to show fans what he's working on. He regularly posts videos on social media, mostly Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. In his The 68 Impala Tommy video from the 13th of August 2022, he shows the audience a beautiful green Chevrolet Impala delivered for restoration by a customer. In spite of its age, the vehicle is still remarkably well kept. As for the expansion of his brand, Vinny was proud to showcase DiMartino Industries' D-Max Coffee on the 15th of August 2022, stating, Want something done right? Gotta do it yourself. This was followed up by a few other posts, all of which reveal more and more about the brand new product. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.